Advanced Functions 6.6, Modeling with Trigonometric Functions. So I've spent a lot of time on this lesson, um, probably way too much time, but I'm hoping that um, my efforts will translate into success for you in understanding how these trigonometric function models work. So basically you're dealing with either a sine function or a cosine function and they are transformed functions. You have shifts, you have changes in the period. Um, they could either be sine or cos, and they can have variable amplitudes, so which is your A value in this case. So you always need to determine, either from a table of values or simply a word problem, the highest and lowest points. That's the first thing you want to do. Once you know these points, you can figure out where the axis will be by adding these two values together and dividing by two. This gives you C. A, or the amplitude, is the distance from the axis to either the highest or the lowest point. So I give you a quick little example here. I said, okay, if five is the highest and minus three is the lowest, so here's my high, my low, where's the axis? It's going to be right in between these two points. So I add them up, minus three plus five is two, divided by two gives me one. So that means that the axis would be right here, right in the middle between the highest and lowest points. And now to find A, we simply subtract the highest point from the axis. So I do five minus one is four. So whatever my function is, it's going to have an amplitude of four. So that would be this distance here and this distance here. And of course, again, your axis is right in the middle. Now, finding K causes the most confusion. So I'm going to do a couple of examples, just finding the K value so that you get a good gra gra grasp of that. So period is two pi over K. Let's say the period is 365 days. Now you're solving for k because that's part of your equation. You're not solving for the period, you've been given the period. So every question, it says if the period is 365 days, then I just set 365 equal to 2 pi over k. And as you know, that would mean k is 2 pi times 1 divided by 365. So 2 pi over 365. Now you should reduce it if you can, but we have an even and an odd number, so that would be my k value. So let's say they give you, I don't know, maybe a Ferris wheel. It takes 40 seconds to go all the way around. So this time your period is 40, and you set that equal to 2 pi over k. And that means k is going to be 2 pi over 40 which is pi over 20. Getting the idea? So let's say the period is two hours. It can be all sorts of things, right? Six seconds, two hours, 40 seconds, 365 days, five years. Whatever it is, you just set that period, in this case two, to be equal to two pi over k. So k will be two pi divided by two. I'll write that all out, two pi over two, or pi. And finally, the last one I'm going to do here before we do some other word problems is if the period is six, six seconds maybe, two pi over k. Put this over one and solve. k is two pi times one divided by six, two pi over six, which is pi over three. And these are the values that you would plug in into your equation right here for the k value. Okay, so we figured out how to find the A. We figured out how to find the C. We figured out how to find the K. So now what we need to determine is, should I use a sine function or a cosine function? or And then I have to figure out the shift. So let's take a look at the options you have in choosing the uh, function you're going to use. So you basically have four choices. You have a sine function, you have a cosine function, 
you have a negative sine function and you have a negative cosine function. So let's figure out what would be a scenario that would use each of these differently. So let, let's say what would give this, this would be your starting at, um, let's say you're at a wave pool and the water is flat and this is where you begin. Then the waves come up and you go up and then you go down. So when you choose one of these four, you want to choose the, the function that is the closest to the y-axis in terms of your data. So if you said um, the function's going to start, you're starting at the highest point, going to the lowest point, or if I said this is the maximum at zero and the minimum happens at six seconds. I might only give you that much information and you have to figure out what to use and how to find the period. So this would be something starting at a top and going down. This would be starting flat and then going down. So this is on your axis. Okay, remember the sine function, the axis right in the middle and you're going down first. This would be going up first. And finally, this one is one that's used an awful lot. That's a negative cos function because it would be something like um, you get on a Ferris wheel. So you get on at the bottom, you go up to the top. So you're starting at the lowest point on the graph. Okay, so I think as we go through some of the examples, you'll see why I choose certain ones. And again, you have the option of these four. So you should know how to sketch these four graphs very easily so that you can use them in your applications. Okay, and then finally, all you have to do is figure out the horizontal shift. So the shift means how far are you away from each of these vertical axes? How far did you have to move your graph left or right? And you know how to do that and we'll talk about them as we do some word problems. Okay, so the first question I have here, it says write the trigonometric equation for the function with a period of six the function has a maximum of 3 at x equals 2 and a low point of minus 1. Okay, so you should make a quick sketch. That always, it seems to, to be easier to figure out your shift when you can see it visually. So it says the function has a maximum of 3 at x equals 2. So I've gone ahead and drawn the graphs here to save some time, but it has a maximum of 3, so right here at x equals 2 and a low point of minus 1. So I don't know where this low point is, right? They didn't say where that happens, but it does tell me that it has a period of 6. So if the period is 6, that means the distance from the high point to another high point has to be 6 units. So that means the second high point is going to be right here, right? So one high point is here, the period is 6, I have to add 6 to 2, that gets me here. The function has a maximum here and a low point of minus 1. Now you know that if you go between two high points, the low point is going to be right in the middle. So I'm going from 2 to 8. So that means I've gone six units, so I want to go three units to find the low point. And the low point is minus one, so it's right here. Okay, so I do know, um, let's figure out some of the, well, let's make kind of a sketch of it here. So it's gonna go kind of like that, right? I still have to figure out a lot of things, but I have a, a basic sketch of what the function's going to look like. So let's go to some of the things we've said we need to find. The period. The period is equal to 6. So I want 6 to be equal to 2 pi over k. That's the period. So k is 2 pi times 1 divided by 6. k equals 2 pi over 6, which is equal to pi over 3. Okay, I've got that. Now I know the high point was 3 and the low point is minus 1. So let's find where the axis is. The axis, I add the min plus the max 
and I divide by 2. You don't have to memorize this, just think about it. It's right in the middle of these two. So if I'm at 3, in this case I'm going to do 3 plus minus 1 divided by 2. So that's going to give me 1. The axis will be at 1. So if you sketch that on your graph and it doesn't look like it's in the middle, you better take another look at it. So let's call this y is equal to 1. So that means my amplitude, which is the a value here, is going to be the distance from the max to the x axis. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So the amplitude is 2. My k is pi over 3. My axis is 1. That's my um, c value. So now let's plug that all into an equation. Now what equation are we going to use? What function should we use? Well, we've started here. We could figure out where it touches the axis and make it a sine function. And we will we'll do both of them, just so you can see. But because I'm going from the highest to the highest here, I'm going to use a positive cosine function. Remember those, the graphs here. So let's just take a look. We're going from the high to the high. That's a positive cos. So let's use cos. So I'm going to say y is equal to, now I've got my amplitude is 2. I say cos, 2 cos. Now I need to know what the k value is. And we said pi over 3, pi over 3. And that's a factored out value here. And then x, now I have to decide how far did I move my x here. So to move it back to this axis, I would have to subtract 2. So it's, you might think of it the other way uh, when you're doing transformations. You said it's 2 to the right, so I subtract 2. So x minus 2. And then I put in my axis, plus 1. So there's your equation. y equals 2 cos pi over 3, x minus 2 plus 1. Now what if I wanted it as a sine function? And your teacher may ask you to give two equations, one for sine, one for cos. I used to do that all the time. So if I'm going to use a sine function, I need to know where is it going to cross this axis here. So I know that it goes from 2 to 5, from the highest to the lowest. That's three units. So to go to the axis is going to be half of 3. So one and a half backwards here, and that's going to put me at 0.5. Okay, so if I'm going to use sine function, you always need to know where is it on the axis. Okay, it has to be touching the axis, and that's going to be at 0.5. So for a sine function, your amplitude doesn't change. Nothing changes. Neither does the period of the function, pi over 3, the only thing that's going to change is your horizontal shift. And you should know that because we've done, um, by this point, you've done a lot of, of um, transformations and knowing that a sine function and a cos function are only off by, you know, that one quarter of a period. Okay, so let's take a look at another question. Some of them we're going to be solving for a certain value. So um, hang on, make sure you don't leave before you've seen a few of those examples. Okay, a mass suspended from a spring is pulled down a distance of two meters from its rest position. So rest position is going to be your zero here or your axis, right? The mass is released at time t equals zero and allowed to oscillate. So it's going to go up and down. If the mass returns to this position, that's the, the lowest point, after one second, find an equation that describes its motion, then find at what two times within one cycle is the spring one and a half meters from the rest position. So here we are. You're going to have to solve for one of these um, specific heights. So it starts at minus two, and it takes one full second to get back to minus two. So this is the lowest point. And how high is it going to be? And where is that highest point going to be? So low, low, the highest point has to be in the middle. 
and it's oscillating evenly. So that means the highest point is going to be halfway through or at half a second. So it goes up and back down again. So the function's going like this and back down. So there's my graph. Now, what equation would you use? So we need to know the basic things. We need to find the period. Not period, we're finding the K value, sorry. The period is one, period equals one. So one is equal to two pi over K. So K is two pi over one, which is two pi. K is two pi. Um, the amplitude, the amplitude, well, the axis, we didn't have to shift the axis because it started, this is its resting point. So we pulled it down, it went up and back down again. So the amplitude is just this distance here, which is, of course, 2. So I have the amplitude, I have the k value, the axis would be plus 0 in this case. You don't have to write that because it's just, that's what it is, right? Here, let me just move this up a bit here. You can still see, there we go. Okay, so now which function should we use? And again, this is a cosine function but it's an upside down or yeah it's upside down one so it's starting at the lowest and going to the highest so in this case we want a negative cos function this means for this function there's not going to be any horizontal shift because we're starting at the lowest point that's the best case scenario we don't have to find the shift so i'm going to say y is equal to the amplitude is 2 it's going to be a negative cosine function. Oh, I didn't leave myself enough room for that. So we'll put equals negative two cosine function. The period is two pi and our variable in this example is time. That's it, that's all. That's all you have to do. Minus two cos two pi t. What if I wanted a sine function? Well, if I want a sine function, now you don't have to do both unless your teacher asks you for both. But in this case, the sine function would be the one that starts right here, right? So this is sine. I'm starting on the axis. So in this case, it would have a horizontal shift, 0.25 to the right, so minus. So I'm going to do two it's a positive sine function because I'm starting on the axis and going up. If it was going this way, it would be negative, but it's not. It's going up. I think up is positive. So I have sine, big bracket, 2 pi. Now I have to do a shift because I'm starting here. So I'm going to do minus 0.25. So t minus 0.25 and plus 0 because the axis at zero, we don't have to write that in. Okay, now the hard part. It says find at what two times within one cycle is the spring at 1.5 meters from its rest point. So 1.5 meters, this is one, 1.5, I want to know what time is it when it reaches this height. This kind of might make you think a little bit about doing your old quadratics, right? What time does the ball go by the window? Okay, so I'm trying to find these two times. So if I want the height to be 1.5 meters, I'm going to set y equal to 1.5. This may look really difficult to do, but it's not a difficult solution when you see how it goes. And I hope that wasn't off the screen for too long for you. So I'm going to say 1.5 is equal to, let's use the easiest equation right here, minus 2 cos 2 pi t. Okay, now you're going to say, I don't know how to solve this. But wait, it's not so bad. So I have no, no um, value over here to bring over. But I do need to divide by minus 2. So I'm going to divide by minus 2. So that's going to give me minus 0 0.75 is equal to cos 2 pi t. 
And I'm going to say, well, how do I solve for time now? I'm trying to solve for time. The answer is that all you have to do is do an inverse cos. That's going to get rid of this, and you're going to use this value as your ratio. So cos negative 1 of minus 0 0.75 is going to be equal to 2 pi t, just like that. Okay, so then you get out your calculator, and I'm going to do negative cos. Now my calculator's in radians, a point, uh, negative 0 0.75, and I get 2.42 approximately is 2 pi t. Now if I want to find t, I have to divide 2.42 by 2 pi. So I'm going to do answer divided by in brackets, don't forget your brackets, 2 times pi and I get t equals approximately 0 0.38 seconds. Right, we're do dealing with seconds. So it takes about 0.38 seconds. So if you look at your graph here, to get to this height, that makes sense, right? I'm between 0.25 and 0.5. So you do want to double check to make sure that you're you're dealing with, you're in the right ballpark, right? So this one here is going to be 0.38 seconds. So what's this one going to be? There are two because as you know, if I asked you where is cos negative one of 0 0.75, you got 2.42. Now there's two ways to do this. I'm going to show you both. One is if you use your unit circle and you go around to here, which is about 2.42 radians, 2.42 radians, and I had cos was negative. Yes, cos is negative in here, and it's negative in this quadrant, right? C-A-S-T. So the other place is going to be to here. That will be my other value for cos negative 0.75. So first I need to know how far is it from here to here, right? So that's just pi minus 2.42. So I'm going to do pi minus 2.42. And that's going to give me 0.72. Let's leave it at 0.72. So this is going to be 0.72. And I'm going to add pi to that to get me down to this place, right? So it's going to be pi plus 0.72. So I'm going to add pi. It's going to be off the screen for you, I know. And I get 3.86. So 3.86, that's my second value. Because remember, you're going to have two. Look, it even shows that on the graph. One here, one here. Okay, so I have 3.86 equals 2 pi t. So t is going to be equal to 3.86. I'm going to divide it by bracket 2 pi's. Close the bracket. And I get 0.61. So t is equal to 0 0.61 seconds. Okay, so that's one way. Once you have this one, though, when you have this value here of 0.38 seconds, there is another way to find the second one. This doesn't hurt to know two ways, right? So I know that from here to here was 0.38 seconds, right? This is 0.38. So because the graph is symmetrical, it means that this point here has to be the same distance away from 0.5 as this one is. So how far how far, how long is this little place right here? I'm going to put it in purple. How far is this? How far is that? Well, that's going to be 0 0.5 minus 0 0.38, which is going to be 0 0.12, right? 0 0.12. That's the length of this. So how far is it from here to here? Well, I add 0 0.12 to 0 0.5. So this point here is going to be 0.5 plus 0.12, which gives me 0.62. And I had 0.61 here. It's just because we did some rounding. 
But that's how you do it, guys. It's not, it's not the end of the world. I know it's difficult, but if you do a couple of them, you'll catch on. Okay, let's go, go to, I've got two more examples for you. I know this is kind of a long lesson, but it's important. Okay, the average depth of water at the end of a dock is six meters. This varies two meters in both directions with the tide. There's always tide questions or temperature changes that repeat every year, 365 days, that kind of stuff, okay? So if, suppose there's a high tide at 4 a.m., if the tide goes from low to high every six hours, from low to high, okay, don't be fooled. That's just, sorry, you're not on the page here. From low to high is six hours. That's half of the period, right? The whole period's gonna be 12 hours. Be careful when you're reading these. Low to high, that's half of your graph. Write a cosine function, dt, describing the depth of the water as a function of the time with t equals four corresponding to 4 a.m. At what two times within one cycle is a tide at a depth of five feet? So we're gonna do another one of those calculations with this one. Okay, you might wanna stop the, the lesson for a minute here and try it on your own and then come back, but I'm just gonna keep on trucking here. Okay, the average depth. So the average depth is where the axis is going to be. Okay, so this is, uh, we're doing D at T. D at T equals six. So the depth is six at this point. Now, I just made a little one of those little jiggity things here because I didn't have enough space to draw all this on. Doesn't matter. Okay, the depth is six meters. It varies two meters in both directions with the tide. Okay, so that means it's the amplitude, right? That's the amplitude. So I'm gonna write that down here. They told me it. Amplitude A equals two. And it says high tide at 4 a.m. So we're using a 24 hour clock here. High tide at 4 a.m. There it is, at eight. If the tide goes from low to high every six hours, well, then it's going from high to low every six hours as well. So our next spot on the graph here is going to be low tide. It's going to be six hours later. Six plus four is 10 and six minus two is four. So there's my halfway point, halfway, right? And so if the entire period is 12 hours, so the period equals six times two equals 12 hours, because that was half of it, okay? So that means period 12 equals two pi over k, and k is equal to two pi over 12 or pi over six. Never put two equal signs in one line, but I'm running out of room. Okay, so that means six hours later, so at 16 hours, we're going to be back up here. And from here to here is three squares. So one and a half squares in, I'm going to cross the axis and one and a half squares back or forward here, I'm going to cross the axis again. So here's my function, it's going to look like this, like that. Okay, so they want a cosine function. Well, that's nice because it that's what I would have suggested you do because look, we're starting at the highest point and going down. That's a positive cosine function. Remember, cos, the, great, the uh, basic parent function, cosine starts at one. Okay, so I have my k, I'm going to say y equals, and I'm gonna use cosine. So I have amplitude is two, it's a positive cosine function, two cos, square bracket, the period is pi over six, the time is t, our x-axis here, whatever it is, that's variable you're gonna use, and it's plus six, and now I need to know what this shift is. So I'm starting at x equals four, or time is four, so that means I've shifted to the right four, so I subtract four, you know that. Now look how easy that was to set up this equation. Not hard at all, right? So 
we could also do a sine function if you wanted to, couldn't we? If this is one and a half, so if I go back one and a half here, one and a half squares, that's at one. So I could have said, let's do the or, just so you get used to doing the two possibilities. Two sine is still a positive sign because it's going up first and then down. So two sine, now remember when you do sine or sine to cos or cos to sine, your amplitude doesn't change, your period's not changing, you're just defining it with a different function. So I'm going to say pi over 6, t, it only went 1 to the right, so t minus 1, remember that's a 4 here, it doesn't look like a 4 to me, and then plus 6. So there's your two possible trig functions. Now the second part of the question says, um, at what two times within one cycle is a tide at a depth of 5 feet? So I'm going to set this equal to 5. Now you can use either one. You're going to get the same answer. So let's just use the cosine because that was the one they asked you to find. So I'm going to say 5 is equal to 2 cos pi over 6 bracket t minus 4 close the bracket plus 6. Now you have to isolate this part. Okay, I'm going to put it in red. I just want this. So I have to bring this to the other side of the equation and I have to divide by 2. So I'm going to say 5 minus 6 divided by 2, that gets rid of these, is equal to the cos of pi over 6 bracket t minus 4. Okay, so now all you have to do is solve, just like we did the last time. So 5 minus 6 divided by 2, that would be negative 0 0.5, it's a half, right, equals cos pi over 6, bracket t minus 4, close the bracket, and then I'm going to do cos negative 1. So cos negative 1 minus 0 0.5 is going to be equal to pi over 6 times t minus 4. Okay, so let's do cos negative 5 here. That's clear. Second, cos minus 0.5 equals and I get 2.09 radians equals pi over 6 t minus 4 and now I'm going to multiply by 6 divide by pi and add 4 got it okay so I'm going to do 2.09 times 6 divide by pi Oh, how lucky is that? Plus 4, and bang, I get 8. So t is equal to 8. Now I know there are two solutions. So let's look at our graph here. It says one of the solutions is going to happen at t equals 8. So we were looking for 5.5 feet, right? So it should be, oh, my graph isn't perfect, but 5.5 feet would be about here. So there's where one of them is. The other one's just going to be on the other side of this. And because this is symmetrical, this distance from here to here is going to be the same as the distance from here to here. These are my two points, right, at 5.5. So 1 is 8. 8 to 10 is 2. 10 plus 2 is 12. So I don't have to go through that whole calculation of... Um, like we did in the last one. This one's easier because it was just 8 and 12. Just like that. Basic. Easy. Okay, the last one I'm going to do, hope you're catching on here. The last one I'm going to do is a Ferris wheel question, which always seems to show up on every unit test or exam. It says, when you board a Ferris wheel, your feet are a foot off the ground. At the highest point of the ride, your feet are 99 feet above the ground. That's kind of scary. It takes 30 seconds for the ride to complete one full revolution. Okay, so that's giving our period here. This is my lowest height, one foot. The highest is 99. So, so much information you can get right off here. 
write a trigonometric equation for your height above the ground at t seconds after the ride starts. Find at what two times within one cycle are you exactly at 90 feet off the ground? Okay, so another example where we're going to do a final calculation for a certain height. Okay, so this is time along the axis, and this is my height time t, and this is a little one here. That's where my feet started, and I'm going to just estimate this to be 99 feet up here. Okay, so I need to find the axis. So again, it's the lowest plus the highest divided by 2, and that's going to give me 50. So let's find something in between. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and a little bit. So let's go up 3. So 1, 2, 3, somewhere around here. So let's just call that y equals 50 or d at t it should be. Okay, so what's my amplitude? Amplitude is going to be the maximum minus the height of the axis, so that's 49. Okay, so let's get to town here now. What about the period? Period is, um, what did we say, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. So 30 equals 2 pi over k, and k is equal to 2 pi over 30, or pi over 15. Okay, so there's my pi over 15. That's my k. I've got the axis. I've got the amplitude. I've got the period. Let's make a sketch. Okay, so 30 seconds, so at 15, we're starting at the lowest point here this time, right? Because we're getting on the ride, time zero. The highest point's going to be at 15 seconds. The lowest point is going to be back at 30 seconds because he said you did one complete cycle. And halfway between zero and 15, which is going to be 7.5, this is eight, so 7.5 about here, I'm going to be on the axis. And another 7.5 from 15, that's going to be 22.5, somewhere around here. So my graph's going to go like this. Doesn't have to be perfectly accurate, but it's a good idea to be close so that you can make some um, comparisons in your calculations. Okay, so let's make up the function. We're starting at the lowest point. If you wanted to do a sine function, you'd have to start it here. That would involve a horizontal shift to the right, 7.5 t's, right? 7.7 or 7.5 seconds. But we're going to start here. Why not? Let's just call it a negative cosine function. So y equals negative. What was our amplitude? 49. 49. It's a negative cosine function. It has a k value of pi over 15. There is no shift. That's the best one. When you start at the bottom, I don't have to put a shift in here. So it's just point uh, pi over 15, t, done. No shift. Let's do the, co the sine one just because. Now, if I start here, that's going to be a positive sine function, right? Positive sine because I'm starting on the axis. So it could be... Um, 49 sine square bracket pi over 15 t. Now I have to shift it. I had to shift it. Oh, I forgot the plus 50 here. Got to add that in. Okay, so what's the shift if it's going to be um, a sine function? Again, remember I told you it's going to be right here. So 0, 15, 1 quarter, I'm sorry, a half of that. So remember, it's divided into quarters, right? 30, half is 15, half of 15 is 7.5. So I'm going to subtract 7.5 plus 50. Okay, so there's your two possible equations, a negative cosine and a positive sine. You could do a positive cosine function. You would start it here then. So you would have a positive cos with a shift of minus t minus 15, right? Lots of options. But you're, generally, you're supposed to pick the one that's the closest to 
um, the y-axis. I mean, I could say all sorts of things. I could move this graph. I could just keep going. Okay, now the second part of the question said, at what time, two times, are you exactly 90 feet off the ground? So 90 feet, I've got this at this 50, 60, 70, 80, 99. Okay, so somewhere around here. Let's just make a guess. Okay, so I'm going to put one there. And there's going to be another one right here. Okay, now remember, this is not accurate, but it's some distance away from the highest point, 15. So once I know one of these, I can find the other. So I want to set this equal again. I want to set it equal to 90 feet. We're 90 feet off the ground. Okay, so I'm going to put 90 here. 90 equals, mm, which one do you like? Let's use the cosine one because I don't have this shift here. So minus 49 cos square bracket pi over 15 t plus 50. Okay, so I have to bring the 50 over. So it's going to be 90 minus 50 divided by minus 49 is equal to the cos of pi over 15 t. Okay, now remember what to do next. We're going to do second function. So cos shift, cos negative 1 of this number. 90 minus 50 is 40 over 49, and it's negative, equals pi over 15 t. We got rid of this by doing the inverse of it. Okay, so that gets rid of this, and we have the cos negative 1 here. So then you pull out your calculator, because you can't do this in your head. So I want, let's clear it, second cos of negative 40 divided by 49. Put that in right? Yeah, okay. So I get 2.53. How about 2.53 equals pi over 15t. So to get t, I'm going to multiply by 15, like this, right? 15 over pi, 15 over pi. So I go 2.53 times 15 divided by pi, and I get 12 point, let's say 12.1. T is equal to 12.1 seconds, depending on what your teacher asks. If they said it two decimals, 12.06 seconds, okay? Okay, so now I have 12.1 seconds. That, that makes sense with my graph, doesn't it? 12.1. Okay, so 12.1 is um, one of them. So we have two ways again. Okay, let's go, let's go to the the two methods because you need to understand both 2.53 2.53 rads now cos was negative c a s t so the other one's going to be in this quadrant same thing again so for me to find this this um, acute angle here I'm going to do pi minus 2.53 right and then I'm going to add it to pi to get this one. Okay, so let's do pi minus 2.53 and add it to pi. That's um, plus pi. And that gives me 3.75. So this one is 3.75. Now that's not your answer. I thought that's this part of your answer. So, or... Let's do um, 3.75 times 15 over pi, just like I did here, right? That was one solution. This is my second solution. Equals pi over 15, uh, well, times 15 over pi. Might as well write that all out. I kind of goofed it. Okay, so t is going to be just this. So I'm going to do 3.75. I've got that in my calculator. I'm going to multiply it by 15. I'm going to divide it by pi. And bingo, I get 17.9. So t equals 17.9. Okay, let's check that with the other way of doing it. So we go back up here. We had 12.1. 
right? How far is it from 12.1 to 15? So this is 12.1. So 15 minus 12.1 is going to give me 2.9, right? Add 2.9 to 15. And what do you get? Bingo, bingo, 17.9. So this is 15 plus 2.9 gives me 17.9. And there's your two solutions. Okay? I hope this really helped you because I spent so much time getting this lesson together for you. I've tried to make it as, as good as possible, covering most of the things that you would see. And... Um, I just hope it really helped. Please leave some comments, give me some positive feedback, subscribe, and I wish you all the best on your trig test.